Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we are about to start restricting people from posting because as we saw, uh, somebody posted here, which they were not supposed to be able to do. So there are two things here. One, we have to know who actually owns the group. Now, group owner uh, is different from group admin or there's an owner who can uh, delete the group if they want to and then there's a moderator admin and so on so as you can see there are several levels here of uh, interaction that are required per group so it would be it would be nice to have a system that can accommodate all this we can't simply put uh, an if statement for every possible outcome let's say if i'm admin if you are this if you're that what we need is a proper system like a function which we just give it in a, a name for example we say uh, am i authorized on this page to run this as an admin and then it will return either true or false we don't need to worry about the internal functionality once we create it all we have to do is ask the question the same way we do with do i own this content or not and we forget about the internal structure of it once we create it so let us go to classes this one we require to make a function because i don't want to create a whole class just for this simple act because classes are quite heavy so the less of them we use the better so this I own content right here. So this is a nice uh, look at what we can do with a similar situation. But what I want to do is let's create a function right at, uh, let's go to the bottom just for, um, for simplicity here. So we don't have to struggle finding it next time. So I'm just going to create a function here. So this function, I'm just going to name it group access. So the name is entirely up to you. This is just random. So group access. So I need two things in order to know uh, to do some evaluation. The first thing I need is I need to know what the group ID is, of course. Which group are we talking about here? So group ID is necessary. Let me just do it like that, group ID. And then the second thing we need is the access. What kind of access are we asking for? Okay. So let's take, for example, if I say um, group access. If I say group access, uh, sorry about that, group access. And then I, I'll say something like uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's the group ID. And then I'm going to say admin. So this function is supposed to return true or false if it's true that me personally, who is logged in, has access to the uh, it, am I an admin in this group? So maybe because the user ID, the current user is um, in the session, though it's not a very good idea to use sessions inside functions like this. It's always a better idea to have the, the ID send in, sent in through uh, the arguments here. Now, the reason is simple. It's because not every project that you do is going to have this value, session, my book. Because for example, if you do another project, obviously it won't have this my book here to have some other name like my chat or something else user ID okay now if you copy this function to try and use it in your new project it's not going to work because this session value is not going to be there you would start needing to edit this but if you had put it as a variable here the same way we've put message ID here we won't care what the value is because simply when calling the function we'll just put in whatever the session information is there without needing to edit the function itself so by not adding session data inside this, you make your, uh, your functions reusable. 
So just keep that in mind that if you want to make your stuff reusable, do not use global variables inside functions. So in our case, in order to reduce the use of global variables here, we'll leave these as they are. We'll do this here. We'll just say user ID like that, and then comma, group ID and access. So when uh, somebody's trying to check, we'll put something like this. We'll do that, and then we'll do this and that. So what we're asking is, is this user part of this group as an admin, the way it is here? Is this user part of this group in the capacity of admin? So this thing will return true or false. And so we can just put things after this true or false, uh, depending on what result we get. Now, for now, uh, group access will just return, uh, let's return false for now. Regardless what we put in there, this is just useless data. So we're just going to say false. So that regardless what we do, we just return false. I want to see how restrictive it can be when you are none of these things. So let's go here and say group access, owner group access. However, the owner of uh, the group can be known by using the I own group. So I think we can, or I own content. So I think we can leave that aside for now. Instead of owner, we're just going to have uh, moderator, admin, and what other one? And we'll, we will see what we get there. Okay, so let me go back here to my situation here. So clearly Mary is not an owner or part of this. So we just have to ask the question, group access, and what access are we looking for? And then depending on the result, we do some other thing. So let me open the group.php here. Uh, yes, group.php, the, the group page itself. So um, what I'm looking for is this section down here. It's important to know what you want to show the user if they are not actually part of the group. So we have these sections down here that show different things depending on the situation. So this is the default. And so all we need to do is we can add one more here. Okay. So what I will do is I will duplicate that. Else if sec sec section <laughs> is equal to denied. So let's just make one it's uh, denied. So we say group content denied. So of course this file does not exist, but uh, all we can do is create it. So it's not a difficult file to create. I'll just uh, right click and say new file and save this file as group. There's group content default. So I'll just copy that and then change the last bit to denied. All right, so we just type, you are not allowed to, or something like, um, hmm, maybe we can say, please, I don't know, This the message uh, is entirely up to you. You can say something like, uh, please join the group to see content. Oh yeah, maybe we can do that. Join the group to see what the members are up to. So instead of telling them access denied or something like that, so just say join the group and then they can join. So here we can have the join button there instead of just the invite. So there we go. Now, how do we get to the denied part? So what I will do here is regardless what the section is, so we are getting the section from there, but we are going to ask the question, does the person here have the right to view what's here? So this is where we will paste group access like this. 
okay so we'll say if not group access like this then we change the section to denied so let's just say denied you have been denied so we know that it's going to bring false every time because uh, that's what we set it to so here i will get the user i'm looking for is the one inside the session so quite correct i will put that one there uh, group id is going to be uh, part of group data group underscore data and then we'll say there's actually no such thing as group id here it's user id because it's inside the users table it may get a bit confusing uh, or you might need a bit of getting used to so who are supposed to view the bottom part here well it's members so are you a member yes or no so that's part of it so member good if you're not you're not going to view anything so let's refresh so we have a syntax error online 308 so it's saying syntax error a parse error unexpected semicolon here so we have an unexpected semicolon on line 308 so if we go to 308 this semicolon is unexpected uh, so why is that so usually what happens with uh, unexpected this or unexpected that uh, it means the error is before the unexpected part so looking at this this looks fine i think i haven't missed anything here uh, this looks okay so it's possible that it's a bracket that i am missing because there's an opening bracket here but we don't get to close the second bracket so there's two opening ones and only one closing so i just need to close that one there so let's try it again like this okay so this is what's happening here you are not a member but there are conditions uh, depending on what type of group this is because if it's a uh, public group for example anyone can see the posts there so we are going to take all of that into consideration when creating these access levels okay so fear not so let's go here and just uh, make this a bit more appealing so i'll put a div over here all right so something like this and then just put some styles so that it's more uh, it looks more like a serious thing so i'll say padding is 1m and i'll say i don't need a background color here i'll just say uh, text align in the center i think that does it actually so let me refresh and there we go join the group to see what members are up to i could put a background color uh, white just so it doesn't look like the text is just hanging there okay something like that Let's put a little margin at the top of uh, just two pixels there so we can leave a little line there. Yeah, something like that. So now we need to add the type of group this is going to be. So it's type, it's group, but then we have first name and we have last name. So in here, we can reutilize this or you can create a new column if you want uh, for group type. So maybe let's do that just so we are more organized. So at the very end here, let me add one more. Let me say go and let's say group type, group underscore type. And this is a variable character. So the, you just pick the largest uh, content that you're going to put here. So we do have a public a group or a private group or what do we have public private and open i think 
I'm not really familiar with this. An open group. Yeah. So maybe an open group is where anyone can come and post without having to be members, but uh, that defeats the point of a group. So I think for now, we're just going to use private and uh, public. I think the other one is secret or something. So let's try secret, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. What about private? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so public. One, two, three, four, five, six. So seven is the largest we have. So let's just put eight for good measure. And that's it. So I'm going to hit uh, save. Now, in case you're going to be searching to see how many groups are private, how many are public and so on, you can add an index to this as well for your queries to run faster. Okay, so uh, this is uh, good. So I will refresh and everything remains the same. All right, so in the next video, we'll see how to determine who to give access and not using our newly created function instead of just returning false. I'll see you then.